Okay, greetings from Malaysia and good afternoon. Welcome to uh, our Facebook Live of UTM Engineering. So welcome all our viewers. I'm Chan from uh, School of Computing, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia. Today, for our 77 Distinguished Lecture Series, we are very, very uh, fortunate, very, very fortunate and honored to have Professor Juan Manuel Cochado all the way from University of Salamanca, Spain. Okay, uh, just I give uh, a brief. Prof. Cochado actually visited uh, UTM back in 2016, and there are research collaboration in artificial intelligence and bioinformatics. Today, we are very glad to have him again with us for a very interesting lecture entitled Deep Tech AI Models in Engineering Solution. Without further ado, I would like to pass uh, to our faculty dean, Professor Dato Rafiq, to brief you about uh, a bit about our distinguished speaker today. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Chan Wang Ho. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, welcome everyone, and welcome to our 77th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq, and I am the Dean of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Juan Manuel Corchado from University of Salamanca, Spain. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Juan Manuel Corchado is full professor with chair at the University of Salamanca, Spain. He was vice president for research and technology transfer from December 2013 to December 2017 and the director of the Science Park of the University of Salamanca, director of the doctoral school of the university until December 2017 and also he has been elected twice as the dean of the faculty of science at the university of Salamanca. In addition to a PhD in computer sciences from the university of Salamanca, he holds a PhD in artificial intelligence from the university of the west of Scotland. Juan Manuel Corchado is visiting professor at Osaka Institute of Technology since January 2015 and visiting professor at the University of Malaysia, Kelantan. Corchado is the director of the European IoT Digital Innovation Hub and of the BISITE, that is Bioinformatics, Intelligence Systems and Educational Technology Research Group, which he created in the year 2000. He is also president of the AIR Institute academic director of the Institute of Digital Art and Animation of the University of Salamanca and has been president of the IEEE Systems, Men and Cybernetics Spanish chapter. He also oversees the master's programs in digital animation, security, blockchain, IoT, mobile technology, information systems management and agile project management at the University of Salamanca. Corchado has supervised more than 25 PhD theses, is author of over 800 research peer review papers and books, has chaired the scientific committee of more than 30 international conferences, and is also editor-in-chief of specialized journals like ADCAIJ, that is Advances in Distributed Computing and Artificial Intelligence Journal, and OGCSP, Oriental Journal of Computer Science and Technology. So that is a brief biography of our distinguished speaker today. Here now is Professor Juan Manuel Corchado from University of Salamanca, Spain on the deep tech AI models in engineering solutions. Professor Juan Manuel Corchado, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your invitation. And thanks for taking me into consideration for this talk. So without uh, any more delay, if you want, I can share my screen, and then we uh, will start with the with the lecture. Okay.
Prof, you are on mute. You need to unmute. Okay. Sorry about it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, can you see my screen now? Uh, no, not yet. No. You have to check your screen. Wait a minute, please. One second. Uh, okay, let me see now. Okay. Yes, we can we can see the PowerPoint slides now. Super. Thank you very much for that. Excellent. So let's uh, start with, with my talk. Um, I'm going to talk today about deep interior and uh, what is the deep tech in general? How technology, uh, AI, uh, edge computing, blockchain can be used and. Uh, can help in the development of uh, engineering solution for today's needs. Um, basically, we are working in several projects related with Industry 4.0, Smart Cities, Bioinformatics, and uh, uh, IoT in general, and they all are looking for new solutions that involve the use of real-time uh, data, uh, uh, efficient AI algorithm and uh, a security uh, technology that, for example, guarantee that the data we are using is the right one at the right time. So for that, we have technology such as blockchain that is helping us to, to develop a, a efficient system in a secure way so we can trust them. So. Uh, in, in that sense, uh, we have a uh, uh, number of, of uh, elements in our lab to develop our technology, which uh, is uh, uh, being developed from our research group. But with the help of the IoT Digital Innovation Hub, the help of a new uh, Artificial Intelligence Research Institute, and with some tools such as uh, dpint.net, which uh, uh, I will I will show you today. Apart from that, we collaborate with several companies, many companies. Some of them are kind of a spin-off developed from our um, research projects. And uh, with all of them, we are developing now uh, over a hundred research projects uh, sponsored at European level, international level, and some from our Ministry of Industry, but most of them. Uh, are related and developed with the uh, companies, uh, especially companies from the IT sector. So, um, as you know, AI has changed a lot and it's been uh, applied to different fields. Uh, and also AI has grown significantly. We have a lot of options from the typical neural networks to the more advanced networks that we can have uh, now to, to develop complex um, projects um, and develop uh, new ways to, to extract knowledge from information, like, for example, the uh, deep networks, the convolutional networks, or we can have fuzzy control system, which are um, working very well in, in many problems, to solve many problems, or cable reasoning, or even genetic algorithms. And also, we have new problems, uh, which are also as uh, uh, different than the previous that we used to deal with before, demanding of a lot of information, and uh, which also provide us a lot of opportunities. For example, with the implementation of the 5G in mobile 
telephony or with the development of the smart grid or the self-driving uh, vehicles or even uh, in logistics, we have new problems demanding of new and uh, strong solutions. So in that sense, we always have the artificial intelligence to have us and we should uh, differentiate between the data we use to solve our problems that we have been doing for a long time, using, for example, uh, real-time series prediction with neural networks to what we have also now and what we have had before, which is the knowledge. We can also model knowledge with kind of expert systems. So what we propose here and what we do in our research team is to model the knowledge to model any problem, taking into consideration the data we can use, but also the knowledge we have about the problem. So we get into the problem, we need to learn what the doctors of medicines know about a given problem, what the engineers, for example, dealing with a, a new railway system or new electrical distribution system, we need to know what they know uh, understand what they have already learned over time and then use as much uh, we can the real-time data opportunities we have now, and especially with the IoT systems, with all the sensors we have around. So if we see how uh, the AI has evolved over time, we can see that we have artificial neural networks long time ago, they have evolved to expert systems, then we had a, a genetic algorithm which provide us very interesting opportunities to, for example, to identify if one beach, like the one you have there, is from South Korea, for example, in Busan, or the other one is here in Spain, in Salamanca. This evolution has taken us to, to create a new generation of, of system, for example, but without forgetting uh, very well or, or, or well tested or well known system like the fuzzy logic for example because nothing is black or white in between we have many other opportunities and the same thing can be interpreted in a different way but uh, by, by by different people so in that sense uh, in the last part of uh, last century we started to work with distributed ai we had uh, good networks, uh, the, the, the communication networks were well developed, and we started to talk about multi-agent systems. But that's not enough. Multi-agent systems has evolved over the time and uh, has provided us, for example, a new sign into the cognitive uh, machines that, for example, are allow us to create a artifacts and intelligence system that uh, in a way uh, are not just solving problems but are solving problems in collaboration with with uh, humans so we have uh, these new models that not are just on cannot be seen as a as an algorithm but has to be seen as an expert models that can create, create uh, an intelligent machine working, working with humans toward the development of a given, given uh, solution for a given problem. So basically, uh, these smart systems were well, there in the last century, but probably we were a little bit bored about what we, what we were doing because no, it, uh, we had uh, with the change of century and then with the huge development of the hardware and the reduced price of the hardware, we focus on applying what we learn until that time. But with internet, with all the opportunities that are, have given us internet, we identified that we could use a lot of data, a lot of information to solve a problem in a different way. And we have different mechanisms to, to develop our uh, solution. We could, at that point, identify signals very well. We could identify faces, identify tumors from, from uh, pictures. But 
that was not enough. We were further, we wanted to go further ahead and uh, we asked ourselves, what else shall we do? What can we do next to, to, to give a step forward? And then at that point appeared something that we call now the deep learning, the uh, uh, convolutional network. For example, with this project, uh, Imaginet, we had to the challenge of recognizing thousands of images at uh, basically a, a, a thousand of images with very uh, complex information, and we wanted to classify them in the in the right way, and um, basically uh, not just in the right way, but in the right uh, uh, time. And then a uh, convolutional networks came around and by pulling, convolving, pulling and convolving uh, the images, we were able to create systems that uh, help us to recognize a lot of uh, images and uh, very good uh, speed and uh, in real time once they, the network were training, but especially very efficiently. So by uh, simple mathematical models uh, developed uh, in a sequence way using uh, interesting or, or imaginative uh, uh, methods for transforming images we were able to provide a um, very efficient system that in 2014 2015 uh, started to perform even better than humans. So now we can say that we can recognize this type of images with a 98% uh, of, of uh, uh, security. So in that sense, now that we have AI to do things that we were not able to do before, uh, things that uh, networks or, or models that can model knowledge, can model data and can do both at the same time. Uh, we have also sophisticated problems. For example, in the um, smart homes, in the in smart cities, problems with industry 4.0, problems with industry in general, and also we have the blockchain. And that's what I want to show you is that uh, the combination of all of these techniques in an interesting engineering way is helping us to pro provide a lot of solutions for many different um, uh, problems. But uh, the world is changed a lot, as we have seen. We need fast solution. Never before the world will uh, or has done a back vaccine for in this case for COVID-19. Uh, in, in the same way, we are developing a new strategy to solve the problems that the industry show us in a fast way, in, a, in months rather than in years, as we used to do before. So basically, we have problems in all aspects of, of uh, our life and uh, we the world has already identified many different issues where, where uh, technology can be used to solve different problems, logistics, smart grid, as I said before, maintenance, transport, uh, agri-food, and so, and so on. So, uh, how are we uh, dealing with all of this to solve the problems? One thing we do is to uh, know and study what others are doing. And in that sense, what we have here is a little map, you don't need to read it, of different uh, families of AI techniques that are around. So what we do in our team is to study all of them. One of these branches can be divided in many, many algorithms and this should be divided in others. So we have hundreds of thousands of different algorithms that can be used can be used, they are specialized and uh, developed for a kind of data set. So 
What we do in our uh, lab is to identify the problems, identify the data, identify the knowledge, and then use that information to identify the best algorithm to solve it. Most of our colleagues, what we do, we they use an average of six different um, uh, AI models in the, the whole research life. We have uh, uh, gone through many uh, top researches in AI, and we have seen that they, over the life, they consistently use only the same algorithm. We believe, we believe that this uh, has to be uh, changed, and we shouldn't focus so much in developing and in using the things we know to solve a given problem. We should focus more in, in uh, uh, basically uh, identify the best combination of algorithms, a kind of expert system, uh, expert system or mix, mixture of expert system models to solve a given problem or hybrid neuro symbolic model. So in that sense, we have now um, powerful networks also with different protocols that uh, can be used in one way or another, depending on the technology you use. And in our research group, um, in order to be able to produce solutions in collaboration with industry, we decided to go from the idea, from the prototype to the product. So our research group, we are 116 people. Uh, out of these 116 people, some of them, well, most of, most of us are working on AI, but we have a group of people working on hardware. They are electronics engineers and industrial engineers, and they develop the hardware technology we need to, to deliver uh, some IoT products. And in that sense, we have developed an smart gateway that we are updating continuously. We are uh, doing it in collaboration with Texas Instruments. And we it's very flexible because it can be uh, communicated with LoRa, Wi-Fi, uh, 5G, and, and so on, Bluetooth. And also, it has different modules. So the, the system can process um, uh, data and analyze data even with deep learning algorithm if, if, if needed. So in that sense, for example, we have been uh, working in some predictive maintenance system in a company called Sonae Arauco. It's the major industrial group in Portugal. They have many different um, type of, of machines in their factories. They have ar around the world around 23 factories. And some of them has uh, brand new equipment. Some other has old equipment. And we have created a, a, a predictive maintenance system for them using our, our technology. So uh, this smart way can be used in different combination of, of, of ways. And I'll show you here some uh, information about how we are doing it. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the concept of the edge computing, but with this technology, we, we, what we basically do is that um, we uh, mm, bring the intelligence, the artificial intelligence, to the edge of the network. Rather than have our intelligence just in the cloud, we bring all, all of that intelligence in a, we distribute some of the knowledge of, of uh, our models and put the knowledge into this gateway that uh, can take decisions and uh, solve problems near where the sensor, near where the problem is. So we reduce latency, the latency of the network of the, of the system, but also we improve the security of the system, which is something very important in the, in the industrial applications we do. So in that sense, and uh, uh, if you want, I can provide you some more details of the wireless system. And if any of you want to 
to, to come here to work with us in the development of this technology, you are more than, than welcome. So, uh, blockchain, we also have a division of blockchain. We are starting uh, developing um, cryptocurrencies and we have developed some cryptocurrency with tokens. Uh, we use Tron for that. And we have more for this, for example, for the Islamic Bank of Qatar. We have developed a product for, for uh, Banco Santander here in Spain and from um, some other companies. But we are using blockchain for traceability to guarantee the, that the information uh, we, we use can be trusted and in a way so uh, we guarantee the integrity of the data we are we are using and we are using that information in, in many different uh, uh, aspects so it's important that when you are scientists that want to solve real-time problems you listen to the world you listen to to the what are the needs of the society what are the needs of the people and do what they want not just do what you what you uh, want to do just to do, do things to solve real problems. So, in that sense, uh, we have developed uh, a tool that we call um, a Deep Int, and you can uh, check it on deepint.net. Uh, it, it has a free free option for you to play with it that allow you to capture data from sensors from any sensor from uh, any database, relational database or non-relational database, then to visualize the data. And then when you have visualized the data, to combine all the data you need. And the, the model helps you to identify the best AI algorithms or the best combination of AI algorithms to deal with the data. Then help you to, to, to execute them and then to create a dashboard, uh, which can be integrated with any uh, application. Using this technology, we have been able to reduce our development time, software development times from, from years to months. So we deliver now our project within three to six months rather than in two uh, or three years. So it's a good advance that uh, is at your disposal so you can create dashboards such as this one you can see here and also help us to reduce our price so when when, when uh, if, if you are into business we are researchers we don't sell anything directly but we do new things for companies and they are the one in charge of selling these products you need to think in the user what the user want in the cost of the application it's very important the cost because with a lot of money it's very normally easy to do a lot of things with a lot of money but uh, you need to think in the cost uh, in the sense that we need to develop product with uh, the a reasonable amount of money but then the product we create should not cost or should cost the amount of money the society the people is willing to pay for it because if we do something very expensive nobody is going to to pay for it and also in the connectivity connectivity is something that is changing continuously so it's important it's important that you you think that what you are developing now will have to be changed in in the short future because there will be something else something else for for developing that that uh, some other connectivity system and you will have to adapt your system to, to that so in that sense um, we have these tools that uh, as uh, i mentioned to you uh, you can create a user and a, 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 a for yourself and just start playing with 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 it so what kind of things can we do with this uh, system for example we have developed a fintech prediction system which is for uh, a bank that is in uh, most of the airports of the world 
And this uh, is a, a currency exchange platform that tell the banks that are in the airport how much money in the different currencies they should have in any branch, in any airport, depending on the number of passengers. We did it, the project, we started it and we delivered it in 2018. It was working very well during that year in the airport of, of uh, Hong Kong. Um, and, uh, and now things have changed a lot. Then the company took this model to all the airports worldwide. And uh, since, uh, we, since the result of uh, what, with the present crisis, the present crisis of the, of the uh, uh, tourism and, and the commerce because of the COVID, we, we had to adapt, to adapt the system and the knowledge algorithm to, to the new situation because the number of passengers are different, the historical data were not good anymore, and we had to adapt the system for the present uh, situation. So this is another example of what we can do. So as you see in, in these jails, uh, there are some uh, mouses, so these are uh, uh, the first prototypes of a machine we are commercializing now for analyzing the behavior of these mouses on an automatic way. So basically it's uh, a product that uh, monitor what the mouses does after putting them some uh, uh, liquids or some uh, gases and uh, uh, we automatize the, the process of providing the, the medicines to, to, to the mouses and the behavior of the, of the mouses. So this is a, uh, this is a bottom battery you see here. This is an implant for hamsters to uh, stop hamsters uh, having uh, um, epilepsy. So this is connected to the brain uh, of, of the hamster. This is, we, we cover this battery with this product here. We put it behind the, the skin of the hamster uh, for uh, two or three weeks to analyze uh, the behavior of the of hamster that has epilepsy. And uh, we, we analyze the signal and the, uh, there is a, a little network here that is able to, to analyze and to identify an episode, epilepsy episode before it happens and stop it. This is a product that we have developed for uh, blood analysis for the Center of Tropical Diseases of Spain. It's been uh, under, under test now in Colombia, it's called a smart lamp, and we are also producing it for analyzing blood. It's a very uh, cheap product that analyze by using luminescence techniques the how the uh, blood of a, of a, a patient change. Uh, in different situations, and we can identify up to six different uh, sicknesses. And just to give you an example, the industrialization of this product uh, cost is around $200, while the ones we had uh, uh, until now was over 20,000 euros. And so you see, we have reduced the price a lot, uh, the quality on the analysis is the same. The only difference is that with our technique, we need around 20, 25 minutes for the analysis, while in this other product that are commercialized, now the, the time on the evaluation is much shorter, is about a couple of, of minutes. But the time waiting for the outcome, uh, I think, uh, well, uh, is worth the, the low cost of this uh, product. So this is uh, an interesting uh, uh, product we have done. We call uh, Deep NGS 
for uh, the next generation sequencing of, of genomic data. Basically, what we do here, we introduce a fast Q uh, product coming from uh, one of the sequencing machine, like uh, Illumina, for example. And then what we do is align the, the gen. Um, we we uh, identify any inconsistent element or any anormality there. We work with the structural, genomic, and somatic uh, data and apply AI system to identify the sickness of a given patient. We initially did this product for a company, South, uh, South Korean company called Thelemix, but now we have our own platform uh, and we are selling it to many other, uh, directly to many hospitals in, in Europe. And um, we are expecting to get an agreement with uh, another company to, to provide these services in the States, in South America too. So basically, what we do here, we extract information from the uh, fast cool system with genomic information of a given patient. We align all the genomic uh, components and then we identify the um, variation we have to identify potential cancer and, and so on. So Hermes is um, uh, our biggest project is a project uh, uh, sponsored by European in Union with more than 10 million uh, euros. And uh, basically what we do is to do in humans what we were doing before until now with hamsters uh, for a stop epilepsy. So we are building an implant for human brain. It's a project in collaboration with uh, nanotechnology experts from the UK and from Germany, and uh, biologists from Italy and France. And we are working on the data science and, and signal processing part of this, of this project. And uh, basically, we, it's a five-year project. We started last year, and we are developing something that may change the life of, of many people. It's um, probably the most uh, complicated problem or project we are dealing with, but it's a interesting challenge. So uh, something important we have done for Airbus is a project that help Airbus to identify, used to help Airbus how to identify where to open new flights between cities and now is uh, been in, we are again with the crisis. As you know, most of the planes in the world are in at the airport, they don't fly. So we are helping Airbus, sorry, we are helping the clients of Airbus to identify where, where and how they should open again the lines they closed before because they have no passengers. So we are telling them if they can't get a new flight from Madrid to um, Frankfurt or uh, to Kuala Lumpur, uh, and uh, when is the best time, what type of plane is the best, uh, and, and how, uh, which one should be the frequency for the, for the flights. So uh, basically, um, mm, well, uh, with, with this project, uh, this project was working amazingly uh, in 2019, then it started to fail in 2022 in around February. We started to identify that the model started to fail. And then in March, we had a big crisis in, here in Europe. And uh, now we have adapted to the new situation and especially some uh, South American companies are re reopening uh, following the advice of, of our system. So as you can see, we can compare uh, different flight modes, identify well uh, what is the best combination and uh, to which airport is best to, to fly. 
<coughs> so uh, Renfe is a company that handles the train um, traffic uh, of, of the trains in Spain. It's a national company and they have uh, they are responsible for the maintenance of the trains. So some of the most of the trains in Spain are electrics and we have in Europe the biggest high speed uh, um, communication systems by train in and after China is Spain has is the country with most kilometers of fast speed trains. So Spanish technology most of it, but uh, basically we still have some diesel uh, uh, trains that are repaired in garages like this one you can see here. So the CO2 production may be very high and uh, what we have done is a system to absorb the CO2 to identify how uh, are the, the contamination of several gases, CO2, CO, CH4, uh, NOx, and um, we identify temperature, humidity and pressure, and with that information, uh, we are modeling the pollution of, of these garages to stop the people contamination, the workers, and we are now working on the second part of this project, which is a product based on aminas, to absorb this CO2 and to put that into this amina and then to transform this amina into a product for the agro-industry. So in that sense, we now monitor all the garages. The second step is uh, absorbing all these uh, gases. So Platinum is a project we are doing with uh, several companies uh, that uh, try to um, automatize all machinery, machinery ma machines that are from the last century, from the, I don't know, which are maybe 40 years old, 30 years old. We put some sensor on them uh, for doing some ma predictive maintenance, as for uh, the case of Sonaya Auco. And um, for that, we use what you have seen here an edge computing platform. So we have the intelligence in the cloud, but also the intelligence at the machine, because some of the machine for security reason need to have uh, very strong communication uh, protocols. So here we are using our smart gateway and, uh, and uh, we, we have a product that is industrialized and we have uh, used we are using in some other companies. For example, uh, we have uh, a big project with Tecotham. Tecotham, uh, they, they are specialized in bridges and uh, basically these uh, metallic structures uh, should be uh, guided. So we have developed a laser system, guiding system, so they are uh, the, 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 the building work is executed within millimeters. They don't have failures of centimeters. They cannot uh, afford that. They can only fail millimeters. So we need to make sure all the structures are well built and guided by, by our system. So uh, these are launching country, but also we just started with a new project with them uh, they are building the new tunnels under the Thames uh, River in London. So we are guiding them, these uh, um, tunnel machines, to, to, to uh, go in the right direction, in the right track. I am about to finish, but uh, yes, we like to say that with blockchain and, uh, and, and IoT, and with our uh, smart gateway, we have developed a system for monitoring and for the traceability of the wine industry. So it's an integral system from the sense of, of point that we store all the information that, uh, uh, that can be captured in a, in a company uh, specialized in growing uh, grapes, 
uh, bottle the grapes into good quality wine and selling the wine worldwide. So they need a strong traceability product and we have developed a product also with deep intelligence for the traceability of the food industry, not just the, the wine. We call this one interwine and we can know, for example, uh, then the number of liters used to for the irrigation of, of a, a great field, but also we know who is drinking the wine, for example, in Japan, when they sell the bottle of wine in Japan. We monitor and we do the whole traceability, so we know in which restaurant is open a bottle of wine of this company worldwide. So, uh, with our smart, smart um, uh, gateway, we have also, also developed a system that is helping us to monitor how empty are or, or full are the the silos of of a company. This is uh, as you can see uh, where the grain is stored for feeding animals, and also we have done a big project for a farm called Ermi. Ermi they grow rabbits rabbits and basically uh, they had millions of, of them they kill around one million rabbit per per week and they have to measure how they are growing so we have identified developed an intelligence system we know how much how much they are eating but we know by measuring the the jails where they are are how 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 fat the rabbits are are getting and with that information we inform the the farmers and the the slaughterhouse when the rabbits are going to be ready to be to be killed so in in that sense and i finish it now with this uh, uh, slides as you can see uh, with the ai uh, with artificial intelligence, with the IoT, with the blockchain, and with the help of some tools like Deep Intelligence, for example, but there are many others around, we can provide a smart solution to many, many complicated problems that the industry has. So again, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the talk. Okay, thank you, bro. Prof. Kochado. And uh, I think it's a very, very uh, eye-opening and very insightful, especially uh, because Prof. Kochado just now already shared us a lot of uh, information, especially how uh, in the theme in Salamanca, how they apply uh, this multidisciplinary research and uh, also uh, to industry, related to industry, because as Prof. mentioned just now, to relate it to the user. So that to benefit back to the user in terms of uh, the the uh, community as well as the cost. That is, uh, I think that 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 is a philosophy that I very uh, salute. And also, uh, I see Prof already share also a lot of uh, product, very very interesting product like the one that uh, I see just now, the one that at Sapo, the one that uh, for for analyzing the mouse behavior, the device of that. That is very interesting, as well as the NGS, because uh, uh, I myself, uh, I involve some of the bioinformatics research. So uh, I'm very exciting to see this uh, technology apply in the NGS, as well as not only not only on biomedical. I see a lot of from construction and also smart cities, food uh, securities, and also wine. Uh, in the meantime, we wait for uh, the comment from the audience. Uh, I want I want to ask uh, Prof about if uh, for current year because current year we have a more dynamic situation with COVID nineteen. So how this uh, dynamic situation actually affect the timeline of innovation of AI? How how it actually affect the AI? Okay, in our team. Uh, we we uh, have a, a, a lab here. In this lab, we are around 70 people. 
Then we have two other labs, in, one in another city and uh, another in another city. So uh, we are in use to collaborate in the distance. And also we are also working with companies that work in London, work in Germany, work in the UK, in Glasgow, in Italy. So we collaborate quite well in the distance. Now, because of this COVID situation, some of our people is working for from home so we only have here in the lab around 30 percent of the people that should be here and the same happened in other labs just to to make sure we we are safe and uh, in that sense uh, it's a little bit more complicated but what we have done is to replicate it, the working the working uh, environment so everybody has a, at home a computer, a good setup. The people working with electronics is a bit more complicated, but what we have done is to expand the lab so they can come in here, most of them, and they have more space, more social distance between them. And then probably we, we have reduced a little bit uh, the some project, but in the other sense, we have been asked, for example, by the government of Panama, the government of uh, of Colombia, and the uh, the local regional government of uh, Castilla Leon, which is where we are based in Spain, to develop technology to identify the evolution of COVID infection, COVID infection, and also the number of people dying, and also uh, how to allocate medical resources to different hospitals depending on how the mm -hmm. pandemic is evolving so in 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 that sense we have more projects in that field but also some of the technological companies they close they have closed uh, the research labs and they are calling us to do what they were supposed to be doing in those uh, labs so in we have this feeling that it's a bit more complicated but our working load has been increased with this pandemic. Okay. I think innovation never stopped, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, Prof, uh, can I uh, request you to uh, close the sharing of, uh, because our backstage one to, yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes. So uh, we have one question. Uh, application AI in blockchain, can you explain it? So maybe maybe Prof can give a, uh, some opinion on that. Yes, uh, good question and a good issue. Okay, when, when you, AI for many people is like a black box, okay? So uh, you have an input and the AI system provides you a solution. Okay, but you can imagine when this solution affects to people, for example, when I create a robot advisor for a banking system, when I, I provide a solution for a banking system and I can say, okay, offer this loan to this person or offer that loan to some other family or whatever, uh, I want to make sure I, won't, I do not discriminate people. I do not discriminate people for their religion, for the color, for the uh, whatever. Though, so for in in that sense, what I basically do is to to what I basically do is to to uh, use blockchains to guarantee that the data and the algorithm. I am using is the right one, so it's clean for everybody, it's transparent for everybody, so I do not discriminate. And what I say is what my algorithm has been identified as the best solution. Do, do, do you, uh, or do I make myself clear? It's just, is I want to, you want to trust the AI application. And for, to facilitate the trust, you can put a timestamp in everything you do, and you can make sure everybody knows what you are doing with the data and with the knowledge. So 
you don't benefit more ones to and and or the others. Okay. Okay, Prof. Well, we have another uh, question from Tan Ayi. So, on the Hermes system, the epi epilepsy seizure smart algorithm is designed to analyze brainwave during a seizure, right? And it is be hard to obtain this kind of data. Okay, we at the point at this point we are working with uh, data coming from animals, so. Mm. Uh, that is not difficult. Uh, we have a lot of uh, regulation to accomplish the, the, the medical, you can imagine, regulation and the ethic issues are very strong here. So we have a committee, an European committee supervising everything we do. So we have the clearance to work with uh, data from animals. And also we have presented an, uh, 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 an experiment uh, plan for working with humans. Obviously, uh, there, uh, uh, there are many volunteers working with us that have epilepsy and uh, which are willing to share the data with us. It's, it's quite secure to obtain data from, from the brain of people. It's not a problem, uh, but it, it, everything has a risk. Uh, but, um, uh, well, in these kind of things, uh, we are minimizing the risk, but we are, uh, with this minimum risk, we need to get human data. And uh, for now, with animal data and synthetic data, we are training our system. We are getting ready and prepare all the infrastructure, the hardware we need, the, the 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 software we need and once we make sure we we can have uh, we can uh, identify the best way the best recurrent network to to understand and to read the data and uh, also uh, when we have the best uh, hardware to implant on the brain we will act on humans but we are not at this level uh, yet, but hopefully by the end of next year, we will be at that, at that level. Okay, I think uh, this will be the last question. Uh, I think uh, I was audience is very, very delightful with the sharing from Prof. Kochado. And I think there is, uh, there is some of the audience, they are intended to know about more about the smart farm, but uh, I think our time doesn't allow uh, or maybe Prof can just give a brief on, on, on the smart farm. You see, farming is some, is very big in Spain. I believe in Malaysia you have a lot of farming there too. And uh, uh, it's difficult to compete and to make profit in this, way, in this system. So everything should come from the side of the automation and uh, apply IT to the farm. And in that sense, we have a lot of technology we have very cheap hardware and a lot of software to, as I said, with, for example, Deep Intelligence, which I, I recommend you to use it because it will be for free to, to, to you. And you can incorporate data, read data, analyze data, treat data and provide solutions that can be easily seen in the mobile of any farmer or in any, any any other any um, uh, computer. So uh, in, in in that sense, I, I believe uh, uh, farming in countries such as Spain or Malaysia uh, should be uh, um, is a good field where to experiment, where to produce interesting technology, and also farmers like it quite 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 a lot. If you show them, they can improve. The, the quality of what they do and be more efficient. Okay, thanks, Prof, for the response. And we have another last one, final one, but this one is from our colleague in uh, School of Computing, Dr. Sarina. So uh, the, basically the question is, uh, which, is which language and technology uh, Prof use for developing the invention and innovation, especially on AI implementation for IoT? Okay. Well, uh, since we work with uh, many different companies, we 
we need to adapt to their needs. So uh, we work, uh, we use a lot, for example, Python, we use a lot Node, but also sometimes we still are working with .NET or PHP. So uh, we have a variety of options, but for example, with Deep Intelligence, as a, you have a lot of libraries there, uh, which help you quite a lot, like for example, TensorFlow and so on. But in any case, as I mentioned you, for the most of the AI product we do, we use DeepMint because uh, facilitate and help you to develop fast product in a, a record time. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Prof. Kojado. Really a uh, very insightful lecture and also a very, uh, very insightful response to our audience. And I hope the viewer can benefit from this uh, knowledge sharing. And uh, we will try to uh, make some other time for Prof. Kojado to share his experience and also knowledge in uh, the future. Okay, and once again, uh, thanks Prof. And I will pass back to the faculty dean for the closure remark. Uh, thank Off you. you Thank you, Dr. Chan, for moderating the session, and thank you for introducing Professor Corchado to me. And to our distinguished speaker today, today, Professor Juan Manuel Corchado, thank you, thank you so very much for accepting our invitation uh, for a great sharing session and for entertaining all the questions from our audience. And to all our audience globally, and by the way, we have uh, more than 200 viewers in this particular session, so so everybody seems to be very interested with your lecture, Prof. Crochado. Uh, and to all of you watching this distinguished lecture series, thank you so very much for watching. Do stay tuned. We have many more interesting lectures for you. Until next time, bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for inviting me. Just to remind you that I was for two years visiting professor at the, the UTM and I, I and will never uh, forget the, the times I visited you before there because you have uh, amazing facilities and great university. Congratulations for everything you are doing there. And uh, you, much, bro. You. you are always welcome here. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you.